Well, shooters and reloaders out there, and three circles, passengers and members, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone, Express. And as you know, we're trying to answer the question, can the Lee App Press do precision reloading? And let's go ahead and show you the summation of the video that we did whereby we loaded 308 precision ammo with this press. Nice looking ammo. They look like factory ammo. Now this load has shot groups as small as 0.458 inches in my Savage Model 11 VT rifle, which we'll discuss in a little while. But this load is La Pua Brass, and it's been three times fired, but that's irrelevant. And we're loading IMR 4064, 44.8 grains of that powder with the Remington Large Rifle Primer and the Sierra 168 grain hollow point match bullet. Now these aren't the best bullets now, but in years past it was the standard of accuracy. But now we start with burgers and we go up from there. Well, you might ask, Fortune Cookie, why did you choose the 308 Winchester? Why didn't you choose your nice 223 Remington with your Model 700 Remington rifle that shoots groups in the threes and fours? Why didn't you do that for this test to see if the Lee App Press could load the precision ammo with the 223? Well, I chose the 308 because I wanted to see if the Lee App Press could handle the bigger case and the more pressure required to bump the shoulder back on the 308 case by three thousandths or a little bit less. And the Lee App Press showed that it could do that. But at any rate, this load's not bad in the Savage Model 11 VT rifle. Let's show you that rifle and discuss it. So here's my Savage Model 11 VT. That stands for Varmint Target Rifle. And it's got the heavy barrel, but this is not Savage's best accuracy platform. They've got their Stealth, which is a kind of a Ruger precision rifle type of rifle. And those are Savage's best entry into the factory precision rifles. This one is labored because it has an inexpensive polycarbonate stock. And when I bought this rifle... The idea was, well, it's going to shoot one MOA or a little bit less, maybe down to half MOA. But I was disappointed because the clearance of the stock wasn't the same on both sides. There's a bigger gap on the right-hand side than the left. And so I had to go ahead and do a little bit of, of aftermarket adjustment of the stock to create a free-floating barrel. But even then, we got a problem because when I hit the, the stock from this side, notice what happens. You hear that? It's still hitting. This stock has a lot of flex to it so that it hits. But on this side, it hits even more. Now what that means is, sure, it's free floating, but when this rifle fires, the internal ballistics are such that you actually see a swelling of the steel and then it snaps back and hammers back down onto the case and the powder's burning and the barrel starts to whip and when it whips it's doing this. Well that is not a good thing. And then we have our sling swivels so that if we put a bipod here or if we rest the sandbags here we got a problem because the weight of the rifle will close up the barrel gap and then we got more of a problem with this when the barrel's whipping. That leads to flyers and we got groups that'll be in the inch range. Well an inch is still pretty good but the thing is we want less than that right? This rifle can shoot groups in the fours but the problem is, 
I've got a lot of groups that are in the one inch range also with this rifle. So we got some fours, but we got sevens and eights and one inch groups. If this Lee App Press can give us that same kind of performance in the ammo, then we could be happy with this rifle. And we can kind of conclude that the Lee App Press can load some very accurate ammo for us. Now, you know, the very best accuracy rifles that are being used today to shoot small groups and even groups out at a thousand yards and farther, those have custom barrels that are the very best in, in consistency. They got blueprinted actions, actions that are made to be well mated with the lugs in the recesses. Everything's blueprinted. And then the stocks are the very best. You don't get this. And not only that, but you don't have a round four end bottom like this one does. Makes it harder to hold that steady on sandbags. And you don't have sling swivels to deal with when you're shooting on sandbags. We can have a nice flat bottom where there's no flex and the barrel gap is maintained enough so that there's no contact when the barrel whips and still put a bipod on it. And also the trigger. This is a factory trigger whereas the best competition triggers go down to ounces. And then the scopes can be up to 50 power. This is a 24 power scope which is plenty for our purposes. But if you, you want to shoot out at long range, you can get the very best Night Force scopes that go up to 50 power and even above. This rifle was a $500 rifle. You cannot match this rifle up with rifles that cost up to 10 times as much. So let's go ahead and take this rifle to the range. So to give you an idea of the wind that we're dealing with today, targets are blown all over the place and we got leaves blowing on our feet so uh, yeah we got a little bit of conditions to deal with but that's not an excuse we're here to shoot okay so we've already fired a fouling round and it hit a little high to the right so let's go ahead and shoot some three shot groups just to see if we're getting some good grouping now i'm using a caldwell competition rest here and uh, it's a good rest but it's very important to put the position of the rest so that we're not too far up on the forend since the forend is a little bit on the weak side we gotta stay closer to the action let's go ahead and make half the correction because from a cold barrel we're supposed to be off a little bit anyway but we'll go ahead and split the difference and bring the windage halfway toward the center so that uh, we won't be as far off target with our reticle and let's make sure again that the rest is positioned just ahead of the action by about three inches or so the stock is stronger there so we won't get as much flexing of that weak forend by positioning it here rather than farther forward. Well, we might as well go ahead and do the same with the elevation. So we split the difference and uh, this will get us closer to the point of impact and point of aim. Okay, trigger pull straight back and... Okay, that hit at 12 o'clock right above the aiming spot and uh, about an inch and a half high. Okay, round number two. Okay, we want even pressure, neutral, trigger pull straight back. And Well, we're back from the range and got to keep a weight on the target because it'll blow away. But 
kind of boring to show you a lot of range shooting. So let's just go ahead and show you the results of shooting a number of three shot groups. So this wasn't that good a group, about an inch and a half. No, no point in shooting any more into this group because it's already a bad group. The second group we shot started to settle down. But I did have a shot that was called out to the left. So that one definitely was because the round four end on that stock. But otherwise, that's actually less than an inch. And this is more representative of what that Savage Model 11 VT can do. So this isn't bad. That's about what the rifle can do as a reliable average. The third group started off very promising. It put two bullets, the consecutive first and second shot, almost into the same hole. But then I'm expecting this to, to shoot well, but the third shot was out here, and I didn't call that one that bad. So I have no, uh, there's just nothing to be said about that. That's a flyer that I don't think it was ammo related. And I don't think it was shooter related because I didn't shoot it that bad. I called it right in there. Now the, the fourth group was much more like it. It shot a nice little clover leaf that's uh, somewhere around 0.3 inches. And I didn't want to put a fourth or fifth round into that because I wanted to keep that group to show you that the rifle can shoot groups in the 0.4 range, but not consistently. More consistently to shoot groups around three quarter inch, maybe up to seven eighths, this kind of thing. That's what the rifle can do. The fifth group put the first two shots about a quarter inch apart. And if you remember, that's actually right where the group before was actually centered right there. So if you put those two holes in the last three holes of the other group, you got a five shot group. That's probably about uh, a little less than half inch. But then I shot the third shot for this group, expecting it to hit between the two, and it hit here. And I didn't call that shot either. So there's something going on there. When you start getting this kind of dispersion, it is kind of pointing at the stock. The stock isn't going to do that well for us. And certainly that Savage Model 11 VT would be considered an entry-level target rifle and for long distance like a thousand yards it's definitely entry level only and the Lee press for precision loading is showing itself to also be for entry level precision loading only as a shooter starts gravitating to better equipment they're not going to want to load precision ammo with the app press but anyway the app press can load accurate ammo. This is still less than an inch. Now for the last group I'm running out of ammo so I got six shots left and what happened was I started to shoot a five shot group but, but then I had a called shot again that was a flyer out to the left. It seems that every time I shot a called bad shot it was always out to the left. So I shot a fifth round into this four shot group here and it actually went through the same hole as that one. So this group is actually a little less than an inch for five shots. And again, that's not too bad for, whoop, that's not too bad for the Savage Mile 11 VT as its factory rifle. The app press can load accurate rifle ammo. And for entry level uh, precision loading of rifle, the app press can suffice for us but it won't take long before a reloader is gonna get something, some kind of press that's a lot more uh, reliable to load the precision ammo.